we are all familiar with the concept of absolute value. It simply tells us the non-negative value of the number. It ignores its sign. The absolute value of 2 is written like this with two vertical lines on each end. So the absolute value ignores the sign of 2 and gives the answer as 2. What about the absolute value of a negative number? Say absolute value of minus 5. The definition does not change. It ignores the sign and gives the answer as 5. What is the absolute value of minus 10 by 3? The definition does not change even if it's a fraction. It ignores the sign and gives the answer as 10 by 3. On a number line, the absolute value tells us how far the number is from 0. 2 for example is 2 units away from 0. Minus 5 is 5 units away from the 0. But is this concept of absolute value as easy when it's applied to equations? Say we have something like absolute value of x minus 5 plus 5 is equal to 25. How do we find the value of x here? Try it out. Okay, to simplify it a bit, let's transpose this 5 to the other side. We get absolute value of x minus 5 equal to 20. Now it gets interesting. This x minus 5, which lies inside the absolute value sign, can be 20 or minus 20. That's because absolute value of 20 as well as the absolute value of minus 20 will both equal 20. x minus 5 can either be equal to 20 or it can be equal to minus 20. This equation boils down to these two mini equations. Based on this equation, we get x as 25 and based on this one, we get x as minus 15. We got two values for x. To know if both these values are correct, let's try substituting them in place of x and see if we get 20. We are looking at this equation now. Substituting 25 in place of x, we get absolute value of 25 minus 5. That equals absolute value of 20, which is also 20. This is equal to the right hand side. x equal to 25 is correct. Now let's try substituting minus 15 here. We get absolute value of minus 15 minus 5. That equals absolute value of minus 20. And ignoring the sign, we get the answer as 20. It is the right hand side. Minus 15 is also the correct answer. That was interesting. But let's ask ourselves one question. How many of us actually check the answer? Very few. I admit, even I never checked my answers in my exams. But here, I am specifically asking you to check the answer. Even though you don't like it, I'm not giving you a choice. If you think this was easy, try solving the next equation. Absolute value of x plus 6 is equal to 3x plus 2. Based on what we just learnt, the expression inside the modulus could be 3x plus 2 or minus 3x plus 2. x plus 6 is equal to 3x plus 2 or x plus 6 can be minus 3x plus 2. Solving this equation gives us the value of x as 2 and solving this equation gives us the value of x as minus 2. We got two values for x here. Most of you all would have got these two values for x. But did you check your answer? Did you substitute these values in place of x and see if this equation is satisfied? Let's check our answer. Take the x equal to 2 case first. The left hand side will equal the absolute value of 2 plus 6, that equals 8. And the right hand side will be 3 times 2 plus 2, which also equals 8. Both these values are equal, which is why x is equal to 2 is a correct solution. 
Now we can jump to the second case of x equal to minus 2. The left hand side will be the absolute value of minus 2 plus 6. That gives us 4. And the right hand side will be 3 times minus 2 plus 2. And that gives us minus 4. Not 4. Here the left hand side is not equal to the right hand side. So x equal to minus 2 is not a solution to this equation. x equal to 2 is the only correct solution and not this one. Good. Now you know why I ask you to check your answer in absolute value questions.